Yes. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, the April uh, board meeting. Thank you to Maisel. Uh, appreciate all that you've uh, done for us for the uh, welcoming us here tonight. I'll go ahead and uh, turn that over to Dr. Archibald. We'll give the pledge. Thank you very much, board members. I have all of our community here, not only Maysville community, but everyone else who's joined us from Jackson County this evening. We have our student leadership team, several members of our leadership team. They're gonna lead us in the pledge. They welcomed you when they came in. And I think now would be a good time to find out who these ladies and gentlemen were. So we're gonna pass the microphone around and then we're gonna begin with the pledge. Hi, I am Faith and I am in fifth grade. Hi, I am Mallory and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, I am Vanessa and I am in the fourth grade. Hi, I'm Marley and I'm in fourth grade. Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm in second grade. Hi, I'm Connor and I'm in third grade. Hi, I'm Cameron and I'm in, and I'm in second grade. Hi, I'm Hannah and I'm in second grade. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm in second grade. Hi, I'm Jake and I'm in third grade. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex and I am the third grade. Everybody, please stand here and play the game. see the kids as far as to be able to do things. It amazes me that the, the size of some of the second graders. <laughs> makes me hug and get over it. Um, board members, have you had a chance to take a look at the, uh, the minutes? I believe so, and if so, can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes? So move. A second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the agenda, Dr. Howard, are there any changes to the agenda? There's no changes, but with the board blessing, I'd like to no changes, but with the board's blessing, we do have guests here from Jackson EMC that have many other commitments. And I was going to see if we could move them up right after our MES highlights and let okay. the EMC go first, but no additions, just an adjustment. Okay. No issues with that. Any questions for the agenda? All right, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as written? So And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, very good. I want to second Mr. Bryant's uh, thank you to Maysville Elementary School. It is an amazing place to visit and there's a lot of great things. If you ever just want to have your day lifted, come in through the front office and walk down the halls at Maysville and it will it will lift your spirits. A lot of fun things happening here. So we appreciate the opportunity to be here. Just a couple of reminders. Um, we've got some important events coming up in our community that we want to welcome you to. Jackson County has taken some significant lead in uh, rebooting the Relay for Life in our community. So on May the 5th at Jackson County Conference of High School, uh, Jackson County Schools will have uh, 11 teams and then we'll, we will unify at the end. So we're excited, plus we have a district office team. So if, you're, if your calendar's clear, we'd love to have you there on May, May the 5th at Jackson County. That is a 6 to 12 p.m. event, so you get to go home. You don't have to stay all night, which is a good thing. <laughs> Um, we also have been invited and want to re invite those that are that are available and interested. Benton Elementary School is celebrating its 80th birthday this year, and they have been asked to be the Grand Marshals at the Nicholson Parade, and so that will be on May the 6th, and we'd love to have any of you who might be available to come and visit that and celebrate Benton's 80th birthday. And then also, um, we have a, a very special event. We're fortunate in Jackson County to have so many partnerships and amazing community members who step up to support our students. And on May the 10th, uh, Lindsay's Legacy will have its annual gala. And so that's a, um, an exciting event. I think, Mr. Hitzkus, we have over 120 students and maybe more than that that are more total. Hours. For all three school systems, there's over 200 students who have a mentor who visit them on a weekly basis and invest in them and to um, really coach them along. So that's a, an amazing um, organization that is you know, really just a support to our students, which certainly helps us. And those of you who um, are not familiar with our board members, I mean, excuse me, our board meetings, 
Each month, our board members committed to rotating, and this is our second year for doing that, and it's given us a great opportunity to connect with each of our communities across Jackson County. And as we visit our schools, then we see a school highlight. So we are here at Maisel, and so I'm gonna ask Dr. Archibald if you would be so kind to highlight the happenings at Maisel Elementary School. Board members, we're going to be using the screen right behind you, so I don't know if maybe you want to roll your chair where you can see. It doesn't look like there's a lot of sitting room out here in front of you, but feel free to find a comfy spot. Just roll right on along. We welcome all of you here to Maple again and are so proud to share some of the, the happenings here at our school. We like to use that term amazing Mayfield here. Um, each and every day there's some awesome, awesome things going on and right here beside me, Rebecca Grogan, she is our Assistant Principal for Instruction and she and I are so pleased to share with you some of the amazing things going on here and thanks to the work of Meg Garber, she is our MRS Specialist here, she worked with many of the students here to create a very special news broadcast to share with you guys today so I'm going to turn out the lights and Miss Barber is going to get things started. And if you all will face our screen, we'll be glad to share some of that with you. Hi, Jackson County. I'm Hannah. And I'm Jacob. And we'd like to welcome you to Amazing Maysville. Here at Maysville, we're growing and it's showing. Now, come on, let's go in and take a look. Here at, here at Maysville, we are doing amazing things every day. First off, we want to head over to see some of Miss Plummer's students and let them share the wonderful service learning projects they have been doing this year. I'm Jackson Holt, and these are Miss Plummer's gifted students. And this is our service learning project process. This was made by the second, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Step one was that we learned about children and authors. Step two is that we researched at georgiafoodbankassociation.org. Step three is we, we took notes. Step four, we wrote letters to grocery stores to ask for support. Step five was we taught other classes what we learned. Step six was we organized a food drive for our school. Step seven, we made posters. Step eight, we donated food. Step nine was that we organized the food. And step 10 was that we will donate 40 food boxes to the local families. Does anybody have anything you would like to share from doing your project or how the project continues? We, um, we will, um, we had a lot of food to go and, uh, store in the room of where we put the stuff. Um, it made me feel helpful. As we were helping people. Um, we still have food coming in, just not as much as when we first started. My favorite part was everyone pitched in to help. My favorite part was knowing that I was helping kids that were starving and feeling hungry. was selected as the Georgia Rome School. Our students were able to visit the Merck family farm.
We learned how to shuck corn and t taste test some locally grown and created product. Check out some pictures from these events. The students here at Maysville have been working extremely hard this year to show growth. There has been goal setting and growth sharing. Each grade level shares their growth in different ways. Students here at Maysville love to be involved in activities outside the classroom. Students have the opportunities to join to join Robot Science Club, Girl Scouts, and course. We also have a group of students who meet with Dr. Archibald regularly as the student leadership team to help with school decision making. They have helped plan PBIS celebrations along with many other events.
Not only do we get to participate in all these wonderful extra activities, we also get to be a part of many events during the school day. This year, our students participated in dress-up days, celebrations, and so much more. We love to have our community involved with our students and our school. We have many events inviting the communities and families to join us to celebrate the amazingness of Maysville. Love being part of Amazing Maysville, where we are growing and it's showing. I'm going to stand up. <laughs> Thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to share that with you. Just a little peek into some of the things that go on daily here at school. And if ever you would like to have the opportunity to come be a part, our doors are always open. We welcome the community to come and join us anytime. Thank you for giving us that opportunity to spotlight some of our amazing Maysville things. <laughs> you're certainly welcome, Dr. Paul. It certainly is a lot of amazing things that are happening. Kids, it looks like you're having a lot of fun. Keep on learning and uh, having a good time. Very good. And keep on growing. I love that. We're growing and it's showing and we can tell it. So congratulations. Thank you all very much. At this time, I'd like to ask if uh, Mr. Joe Hicks and Ms. Karen Huey could come up. And as they're coming forward, these are outstanding representatives of uh, Jackson EMC. And we just wanted to make sure that our community and our board was aware that we've been very fortunate on many different levels to partner with Jackson EMC. Um, many, if not most of us, are uh, customers of Jackson EMC, and they are truly community partners. And we applied for a grant on behalf of our middle and high school students to really continue to embrace the concept of leadership development and escalate that for like a Jackson leadership for our students and understanding that that's a cross-cutting professional skill that regardless of what uh, profession or future students see for themselves, being able to understand the real dynamics of strong leadership is very important. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to receive a, about a $15,000 grant 
grant, which has gone into our Jackson County Foundation, and we use that uh, to, to bring in trainings from Family Leadership Institute and a variety of different uh, avenues to train our middle and high school students on true leadership capabilities. So, Ms. Ewing and Mr. Hicks, thank you all for being here, and I was going to give you an opportunity just to share anything you might want to share as well. Well, thank you. We are delighted to be here at Jackson EMC. Joe and I, uh, we have the motto that Jackson EMC is your power, your community. So we are proud to be the lead partner for the Jackson County Leadership Academy since our headquarters, we'll, we'll say our world headquarters, how about that, is located in <laughs> Jefferson, Georgia. And we just read the positive feedback on the survey from these students. And they are really learning and they're having a fabulous time doing it. And they gave really uh, some good feedback. And we are confident that the folks uh, around the table here will take that and use it as our high school students grow. So we are committed to helping the county develop and build on and create a sustainable leadership academy that will benefit not only Jackson County, but our entire state, we think. So on behalf of Joe and the entire team at Jackson EMC, we thank you. Thank you. We know you are very busy and we're very grateful for you taking the time to be here. And I, I just want to send a very special thank you again to you all for coming. And also make you as a community aware that uh, we take this uh, very seriously. And we, we've spent quite a bit of time and we expect that this program is just going to get stronger and stronger. Right now we have 28 students who are in the program, middle and high school, and they, they come three to four times a year for a few hours. They have lunch with us. They receive a train, a very deliberate leadership training that does conflict management um, that builds on potential skills that kids have that just make them stronger. And that's all under the support of the work that Jack CMC has laid out for us. So thank you again. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank y'all. All right. So let's begin with um, some of our other student celebrations that we uh, do each month. And again, those of you who don't frequent our meetings, we're very honored, as I have stated, to have partnerships. And one of our monthly recognitions is for our Rotary students. And so if I could at this time ask um, Mr. Dixon from East Jackson Conference of High School as he's coming forward. Mr. Dixon is the principal at East Jackson High, and he has March and April to recognize. Unfortunately, the March student had to work this evening. I'm sure Mr. Dixon will tell us those young folks' name as well as the teacher, but then he has guests here for the month of April. So, Mr. Dixon, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Sure. Martha, you want to come up? Emily, you here? <laughs> just kidding they're great this is uh my favorite part of the uh the meeting quite frankly um no disrespect to any other and, and you guys did a great job at maple but um i love to talk about our kids especially these ones that are doing so well um this is martha ware um and her teacher that she chose as much as miss emily gunderson who teaches a, a battery of different things at the high school but uh, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your courses, um, which are clearly rigorous. She is uh, in Mastery Mixed Course, dual enrollment. Um, she's taking American Government and uh, Comp and Lit, so she's getting a couple of college credits from UNG, Essentials of Healthcare, Honors Human Anatomy and Physiology, AP Calc AV, AP Environmental Economics, AP Human Geography. So the young lady is doing some work, no question about it. And her activities, I don't know how she does all this because uh, she's got plenty of homework, make no mistake, but activities are long and uh, prestigious. President of the National Beta Club, captain of the rifle line and color guard in marching band, uh, choral and alto one and two section leader, um, UGA choral uh, day, all state chorus, uh, choir member at, of Carnegie Hall's chamber, Lead ensemble member in theater spring and the theater spring musical, National English Honor Society, East Jackson Student Leadership Officer, International Thespian Society, Georgia High School Association, and literary trio in argumentative writing. That's even hard to say. <laughs> um, and then Bethany United Methodist Youth Group and Bethany United Methodist Choir. Um, really significant activities. Her honors and awards. Faculty Honor Roll, Most Dedicated 
color guard and rifle line, most outstanding student choir, regional champion of the GHSA literary, literary with a second place in trio, first in wastewater treatment competition, straight superiors in large group performance evaluation, straight superiors in auxiliary competition, and Georgia Merit Scholar. That's a heck of a, a lot of accomplishments. Well done. Um, her most influential teacher is Miss Emily Gumption. Why don't you tell us a little bit why? Well, I've always loved the way she teaches her classes, and you can tell she's really involved with the senior class. She's actually our coordinator for lots of activities. So, like, she'll be coming with us to Six Flags and uh, <laughs> having all the fun. <laughs> but I just really like the way she has a passion when she teaches science, and I really like science. And I can second the fact that, that Emily does a fantastic job leading the senior class, does it uh, for the last couple of few years and it does a great job. Where are you planning on going to school? Um, I plan to go to the University of Georgia this fall and uh, to do a pre-pharmacy major. Again, uh, Ms. Martha Ware. Congratulations, Martha. We've seen you around before. You're an active young lady, and we're very proud. We'll keep up with you as you go forward, and congratulations, Ms. Gunderson. We know what a great job you do, inspiring kids. And, of course, Connor Beecham was not able to be here um, this month, uh, and Connor is a, was the March Rotary student, and then Mr. Greg Gilman, who is an ag agricultural teacher at uh, East Jackson High School, was his selected uh, teacher of the month, so we, we congratulate them as well. And Dr. Jones had to be at a, a, another school event, and he asked Ms. Phillips if she she could come and represent Jackson County High School and I'm certain that she is very proud to do that as she introduces our um, student of the month for Jackson County Comprehensive High School. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to introduce Avery. Um, this is Avery Crump, our um, Rotary student of this month, and I'd like to introduce her parents, Michael and Kelly Crump. So if you don't mind just standing so that we can honor you as well. Um, Avery is currently enrolled in the dual enrollment program, um, taking Comp and Lit. She is a member of our yearbook staff. She takes AP Government and is enrolled in Physics Honors. Um, she's involved in the National Honor Society, Beta Club, Student Leadership Team. She is our yearbook editor, and she is a member of Twelve Stones Church. Um, she is also going to be an honor graduate, and Emily uh, Wright is her most influential teacher. Emily is one of our English um, teachers and our yearbook advisor. And so, Avery, would you please tell everyone why you chose Ms. Wright? Um, I chose Ms. Wright because despite having no prior experience with yearbooks, she stepped up and took the position, and over the last two years that I've spent with her, I can say that she's definitely played a huge part in the unity and just all the success that we've had in our program. It kind of started out as something that we had a hard time having a firm foundation in, but through Ms. Wright, myself and the other two editors have found so much success in the program, and so I just want to say thank you to her for that. Also, Avery is planning to attend Kennesaw State University this fall. So, Avery, tell us a little bit about what you plan to study while there. I plan to uh, major in business at Kennesaw State, and I would also thinking about a minor in journalism just because of my love for yearbook and my love for writing. Thank you. Congratulations, Avery. You have a bright future as well. And as, as a community, I'm sure you feel the same sense of pride that I do for these young ladies to come up and to speak publicly and do a fine job doing it. And you talk about leadership development and professional skills for the future. They are certainly demonstrating that very early. So congratulations and thank you for thank you for that. I'm going to ask uh, one of our Assistant Superintendents, Mr. Todd Nicholson, to come forward at this time. Um, and as he's coming forward, I'll tell you, this is one of our exciting, there's many things that we do that are exciting, um, but 
uh, sharing the, the achievements of some of our students in what we find to probably be one of the most difficult things to continue to teach, and that is writing. Uh, there are many different ways to communicate now. These are number one, and so the more we can encourage kids to continue to develop their craft of writing, um, it's a real gift. And so, Mr. Nicholson, I'll let you explain the Georgia Young Authors and what we have before us. Thank you. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to be here this evening, and I was trying to think about how to frame this, and all of us have been to school, and you can, you can talk about back in the day, but if you go way far back in the day, we had the three R's, right? Reading, writing, arithmetic. Technically started with an A, that's why we had to go to school many more years to realize that. <laughs> A lot has changed. Now you can learn robotics, computer science, health science, AP calculus. But one thing hasn't changed, and that is the imperative need to communicate, to articulate yourself. And writing is that connective fiber that connects everything that we do in all of our content area classrooms, but also beyond that, in the world beyond the school walls, which is critical. If you think about the ability to, to represent and present your ideas, the ability to communicate, it all takes place in writing. And as an educator, one of the most exciting things is to be able to read what a student's written, because I tell you, math teachers out there, sometimes it's very hard to figure out what's going on in a child's mind, but when you can read what somebody's written, it's, it's a little scary because you get a glimpse into their mind. Now, I have, I have a colleague and a friend up here, Christy Holloway from Northeast Georgia Risa, and she will give you the official story about young Georgia authors, but I want to tell you that, that Jackson County Schools, our 7,500 plus students had the opportunity to participate in this, and through the process, we have judges that look using a rubric and identify not one winner per grade level, it's, no, it's nothing like that, it's one winner per school. So in an elementary school, you could have a fifth grade win, but you can have a kindergarten win, and it happens. That is amazing when you think about it, that a kindergarten student has developed such a talent at such an early age, and where are they gonna go with that talent? And that's, that's the exciting part behind this. So I'm going to, to present with Ms. Holloway's assistance the Jackson County winners for the schools, and then she has a very special presentation that she would like to make after this. So winners, if you were here this evening, if you would come up, Ms. Holloway is going to give you a medal. We have also taken your writing, and we have, I'll call you, I'll make sure I'll call you when you come up, I'll come up when I call you, rather. We're gonna give you a medal. And we're going to give you a booklet that has, it's been personalized by your teacher. It has your publication as a place for your teacher afterwards to write some notes to you. So make sure that they get it and they can, they can write a very endearing note for you. But when you, when you, when I call you up, if you'll stay up here, because we want to get a picture of everyone. And then, like I said, Ms. Holloway's got a very special presentation after. So enough talking, Mr. Nicholson. Our first winner in no particular order this evening, ladies and gentlemen from South Jackson Elementary School kindergartner who wrote the story Best Friends. We have Ada Johnson. And she is just as cute in person as she is on the cover of her. Okay, the author of The Rich Princess from Gum Springs Elementary School, first grade, Jenna Wynn. <laughs> the author of A Great Surprise, second grade, here at Maysville Elementary School, Hannah Jarrett. A timely piece, The Easter Adventure by Julia Crothers, Gum Springs Elementary School. The author of A Wedding on the Farm by Megan Gates, East Jackson Elementary School, fourth grade.
perseverance. Those crutches are not going to stop her. The author of A Day in the Life as a Homeless Person, fifth grade East Jackson Elementary School, Nathan Barton. From West Jackson Middle School, sixth grade, Sadie Dial. From East Jackson Middle, Middle School, seventh grade, Abigail Bradshaw. From West Jackson Middle School, Shakespeare inspired narrative, Grayson Dunton. This one from Jackson. That's a pretty cool trick I have, isn't it? From Jackson County Comprehensive High School, ninth grade, echoing music, Mia Palmer. Also from Jackson County Comprehensive High School, tenth grade, with the publication Summer, Aubrey Presley. Jackson County Comprehensive High School with the title Almost Alone, Jay Ball. And last but certainly not least, from Jackson County Comprehensive High School, the title In the Mud of the Mountains, Noah Kitchens. done. We look to being able to purchase all these on Amazon very soon, so get to publishing. Thank you very much. You guys can have a seat, and then we're going to turn it over for a very special announcement from Miss Holloway. Okay. Good, because I'm trying to figure out the microphone. Well, Mr. Nicholson, sure. We got it. If you prefer, yeah. You want your notes? <laughs> Once again, I want to congratulate all of these students, um, and I would like to just ask you a question. I was thinking about this on the way over, and I was thinking about how each one of the papers um, had different strengths and different things that really stood out as um, we were reading them, And but the common thread with all of them was that each one of these students is a risk taker and has the confidence to put their ideas on paper and then share them with others, and I thought, Imagine if I asked each one of you to write something right now and then give it to me to read out to everybody. Imagine how you would feel. Um, and so it helps you to appreciate the talent and the confidence it takes to be a writer and to share what you've written. So again, I want to congratulate all of you who were system representatives. And then um, I'm also here tonight to congratulate um, some students who actually won at the regional level. And so um, just to kind of give you a little perspective on the regional level, we have 13 different systems 
that our region um, includes. And so if you could imagine um, how many students that is that uh, they were competing against, it's a tremendous field and each and every one of the papers were fantastic. As Mr. Nicholson was saying, it took a lot to get to the regional level. So um, at this time, I would like to congratulate um, those whose papers will be going on to the state level of competition. And um, actually, in Jackson County, you have four students um, who are going on to the state level. And um, I will say that that was the greatest number of all of the systems um, represented in the Um, the first student, if you'll come up when I call your name, um, Mr. Nicholson has a special award for you, is Noah Kitchens. So we'll have his mom come up. <laughs> and Noah will be the 12th grade representative for the Northeast Georgia region at the state level of competition. The second um, state level um, competitor is Jay Ball, 11th grade. Um, our next um, representative going to the state level is Sadie Dial for sixth grade. And the last representative from Jackson County going on to the state level of competition is Jenna Wynn, our first grade representative. <laughs> Again, just a big congratulations to these students, to their teachers, and to the administrators, and also their parents. This is an excellent honor. Congratulations to all of the competitors. Um, I would I would venture to say, uh, Ms. Holloway, that you're probably pushing 100,000 students within those 13 school districts or more. So um, that's a that's a significant honor, and I really am proud of the work of those students. And we've got some teachers here too. And so the teachers that are here, you've coached them, you've inspired them, and you've made sure that they believed in themselves. So thank you um, for for sharing that that passion and congratulations. All right, we have a couple more um, acknowledgements and celebrations that we want to celebrate. Ms. Holloway, you're welcome to stay, but we appreciate you being here, and if you want to excuse yourself, you feel free to do that. Um, high school high-tech computer recipients. I'm going to ask, I believe um, it might be Ms. Mintz who's going to come forward, or is, is that correct? And Ms. Ms. Gunter, um, we had a lovely presentation as they're coming forward um, on Thursday evening at our work session. And just as they're coming forward, I'll just plug it again and want to thank our support staff that we do live stream our board work sessions as well as our board meetings. Um, and so there's a lot of conversation that happens at our board work sessions. And one of the presentations we saw is some outstanding work happening with high tech high school through our, uh, our special ed program. So if you would, uh, Ms. Gunter and Ms. Mintz, if you could share with us these recipients that would be outstanding. You'll need this. If you don't mind, I'm sorry. I think that one died. <laughs> Thank you. On Thursday evening, we had the great pleasure of hearing um, from Miss Mintz, uh, Becky Edge, and Rebecca Williamson, who is our vocational rehabilitation counselor, who works with our students at both of our high schools. And they shared with us a program that they have implemented over the last two years to um, help our students gain employment skills. And so one of our partners in this work, that, that program is our uh, career exploration program, and one of our partners in this work is High School High Tech. And so we want to thank you, Sid, for everything that you've done. This is Sid Jessup, and he is with High School High Tech. And I'm gonna let you guys talk about how, how students were able to, um, to earn these computers. Okay, thank you. Through High School High Tech and Career Exploration, our students have the opportunity to participate in a computer competition with High School High Tech. And um, they had to either write an 
essay or make a PowerPoint presentation on how computers would benefit them. And we had three students from Jackson County High School that, that won a computer. So I'm gonna let Mr. Jessup explain the actual process that you introduced to All right, our first uh, recipient is Nick Holmes. And uh, I think Nick's a senior this year. Now, he went on some tours with us last year. The goal of the high school high tech program is basically we work with juniors and seniors that are in high school. And our ultimate goal is we want them to graduate from high school. That's our number one goal. And then our second goal is we want them to see what opportunities are available after high school, whether that's to further their education or to enter into employment. So what we've done over the past couple of years is we have taken them on tours of various businesses in the area. Uh, a few of them just mentioned real briefly. Uh, I think this year we went to Caterpillar. Uh, last year we went to McLean Southeast, which is in Athens and McCann Aerospace. And uh, I think we went to Kings Hawaiian as well up here in, in Gainesville. Uh, and I'm sure there are other places that you guys went maybe that I'm not, not aware of as well. But uh, we also like to take them to, to technical colleges or college so they see what kind of educational opportunities are available there. Uh, but that's pretty, we're a nonprofit, and we just partner with local high schools, and we've been working with Jackson and East Jackson for the last couple of years, and are very excited about the partnership and look forward to continuing. Okay. So, Nick, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations, students. That's pretty cool to get somebody to hand you a laptop. That's <laughs> wonderful, so congratulations. Um, I'd like to call Dr. Selena Blankenship. We have just a couple more recognitions. Uh, we have a, some service, uh, excuse me, excellence in service awards that we'd like to recognize. Good evening, board and community members. Um, I want to take a moment to thank Dr. Archibald and Ms. Grogan for having us all here this evening. Um, and I'm going to put in a shameless plug for the mentoring program because we have several um, central office staff members who have uh, been honored to be able to mentor in our school system this year. And I have the pleasure of coming every week to Maysville. So this school has uh, taken a special place in, in my heart. And uh, it's a, it is an amazing place. Uh, but I am here tonight on behalf of the Excellence in Service Awards Committee. And this uh, award was established this year to recognize staff members, community members, parents, um, or anyone really who uh, supports our students and our schools in a, in a selfless and, and excellent way. And so everyone here has the opportunity, any, in fact, anyone in Jackson County can nominate someone for an Excellence in Service Award. This month, um, we have two recipients who really exemplify and model the kind of selfless caring that we want our students to see and, uh, and to grow up in, and uh, give back to others as well. So our first um, award recipient is Ms. Dorothy Moon from West Jackson Elementary School. So Ms. Moon, if you are here, um, if 
you will come up and stand with me. I will um, share a little bit about um, what the nominators said. Um, nominators have an opportunity to either have their name uh, shared or to remain anonymous. And uh, your nominators asked to remain anonymous. So I need to fix this before I get to you. <laughs> One nominator said, I would like to share an act of kindness that a staff member did for a child at West Jackson Elementary School. This child is in second grade and is a shy little boy who always does the right thing and likes to help in any way he can, quietly, not to bring attention to himself. One week in the cafeteria, he was picking up trash and throwing it away. I'm not sure if he had done this on several occasions that caused the custodian to notice, but on this day, she took the time to stop and give, my, give this young man an envelope and in this envelope, there was a dollar and a thank you note for helping. She had no idea how happy this made this little boy who rarely gets to buy an ice cream. I thought you would like to know that in this world today, with everyone being so busy and rushing around, that one person made an impact on a little boy's day that is appreciated by his family and the school. Ms. Dorothy is always willing to help everyone here at our school she never complains and always has a smile on her face. A big thank you goes to this lady who took the time to notice a shy little boy and make him feel special. <laughs> Our next uh, recipient you have seen already this evening and that is Miss Debbie Mintz, and her nominator was Miss Becky Edge. Debbie Mintz works tirelessly to support students in the Jackson County school system. She is a teacher and job coach at East Jackson Comprehensive High School and Jackson County Comprehensive High School, where she enhances the job experience for many students with disabilities. When she began as a teacher job coach, her self-contained students had limited opportunities in the community to gain work experience. Most jobs were typical grocery store bag clerk, custodial, daycare, or volunteer thrift store, all which are honorable jobs, but she wanted to expand those opportunities. She has been able to work with our community employers and build a partnership to expand the opportunities far beyond what our team envisioned. She supports students in multiple work sites and sets the bar high for success. With her foresight, our students, over 95%, now gain employment in various businesses ranging from Mueller Yarns, Walgreens, automotive mechanics, and animal care facilities. Recently, she has worked with partners such as Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Services, Goodwill, and High School High Tech to grow a sister program for students with disabilities in the general education setting. With these partners, she is able to expose our students to opportunities beyond high school. Students work in the classroom on work readiness training, touring technical colleges, and businesses within and around Jackson County to broaden students' horizons on possibilities for their future. Her dedication to students with disabilities is a focus on employment that is invaluable to our system. Debbie Mintz is well deserving to receive the Excellence in Service Award, and I agree. Congratulations. So remember that you may nominate a deserving individual um, or organization to receive our Excellence in Service Award. Uh, you can find the information on our Jackson County website and follow the link to the nomination <laughs> form. Those are two outstanding, very quiet leaders who have a tremendous impact on the, uh, on the culture of our school and our entire community. So congratulations, Ms. Dorothy, very deserving. And Debbie back there, um, 
thank you. Just thank you for what you do. We have two more uh, awards that we want to recognize. Those of you, again, who are not frequenters of our Board of Education meetings, we began several years ago recognizing our schools who do an outstanding <coughs> job of maintaining an appealing environment, and we call it our Clean School Award. And we've broken that into three categories, and we have three winners um, and no ties this month. So we have a new winner. Our Small School Award for Division One goes to a first-time winner with a score of 93, and that is North Jackson Elementary School. So congratulations. <laughs> Well, and I have to say that's bittersweet. Um, it's quite bittersweet. Yay! Congratulations. Now I'll escort you to the parking lot because Dr. Archibald. <laughs> they've won it for, um, for like 17 months straight. I know you are. <laughs> so, congratulations. And quite honestly, that's exactly what we hope this inspires. So it's a little bit of healthy competition to get better and better and better. So our mid-size uh, school winner goes to East Jackson Middle School, and they have been winners before. And I know that uh, Miss Barnett had a conflict this evening, so we may not have, but we will make sure that East Jackson Middle School gets that. And uh, it's quite... Uh, Perfect timing because our Division Three large school winner goes to West Jackson Elementary School. So, congratulations to those three winners, and I think we've got somebody here who can receive that from West Jackson. This is one of those um, awards that we will continue to keep um, very important. Our custodians have a significant impact, believe it or not, in our, in our students' lives. Those are folks they see on a daily basis who um, are, are really special to many of our kids. They don't give them grades. They, don't have, they just get to interact with them and make sure they have a clean environment, and it's very meaningful. So congratulations to those winners. And our last award this evening is uh, through our transportation department. So Mr. Farmer, if you'd like to come forward. Um, and as he's coming forward, you may have seen that um, we did have a, a, an incident this morning. We're very, very grateful that, that no one was injured. Um, we did have a bus that had an accident um, on a very crooked creek road down in the South Jackson community. Um, and, but we're, we're very, it is very crooked. Um, and we're very blessed and grateful that there was one student and the driver and neither were injured. So thank you to the transportation department for helping to support that situation and we're very glad no one was injured. Mr. Farmer, I'm going to turn this over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Thank you, Board. It's always a pleasure to come and recognize an outstanding or two outstanding individuals for what they do. And uh, before I get started, I'm going to turn the mic over to Ms. Reynolds. Ms. Jenna Gray, would you come forward, please? Tonight we have the honor of recognizing Ms. Gray for several accomplishments. Um, and, and we appreciate everything that, that she does in our department, the dedication, the determination. Uh, I have a little story to share, but I'm going to let Michelle go and I'll, I'll close with my story. This is Jenna Gray. She is a mom of five children. I always forget, but five children. Um, she's a first time driver. It's her first year with us. Started out brand spanking new, but has done a wonderful job. Just really grabbed the bull by the horns and went with it. She lives right here in Maysville. She's a Maysville driver. But when you're a bus driver, yearly you have to do what we call the rodeo. Totally different than what you're thinking, but it's an obstacle course where you drive through all different kinds of things. Quite, quite challenging at some point. Miss Jenna, very first time ever doing it, scared to death, perfect score, perfect score, blew me away. But if you want to see a person, I'm trying to scare him, I'm trying. If you want to see a person that defines the words, determined, dependable and dedicated. That is Miss Jenna Gray. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. So on behalf of the transportation department, we want to recognize you tonight mainly for your safety, your dedication to keeping our students safe no matter what. And also, uh, the extra bonus is that she is one of the six thus far that has scored a perfect score on our bus rodeo. We are still going through 
our scores. I'm hoping there'll be many more, but she is just one of the six. So it kind of worked out right tonight that we could just do both here. So on behalf of the transportation department, we'd like to present you this little token of our appreciation. However, I have to tell my story. I knew Miss Jenna three years ago and a little before that, but we had a meeting the first year. I was director of transportation and then she came back the second year and we had another meeting. But she was always a parent that would listen, that would acclimate and wanted to be a problem solver, not just someone who wants to point out the problem. So in doing that, she asked me one day, and this is a loaded question she should have known when she asked me, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do in your department? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, Ms. Gray, go take your four tests, come back, let us train, and you become a bus driver. Not having any idea that she would actually take that bull by the horns, or that animal by the horns to do it, but she did. She came back, and it has been, she is an asset to our department, but I just appreciate her being a part of problem solving solutions. And this is one thing that she did that just impressed me because I have several, you know, conversations with different folks and she is the first one to actually take up that um, point and do that. So congratulations and uh, it's very difficult to be a bus driver sometimes. Uh, you're the only people that we have that we ask you to put 40 to 70 kids on a bus and turn you back to them and manage it and get them home safe. And uh, that is dedication and it takes a special individual to do that. And I'm proud of all my drivers. I'm proud of the driver this morning for what she did, how she handled it. And I just appreciate and want to say thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Gray. We have radios um, at the administrative level, so we get to hear the bus traffic and the conversation. And one thing that, that Ms. Reynolds nor Mr. Farmer said that I want to say about Ms. Gray, that is one of the most positive ladies you will hear. She notices when there's a pretty sunrise and she welcomes people and says good morning uh, when everybody's loading their buses in the morning. And we hear that and we thank you for being a, a, an inspiration for kids start their day by the first person they see when they get on that bus. And if it's somebody that's positive and it's a, it, it has a much greater chance of being a good day for them. So thank you very much for that. We've had an exciting evening with lots of celebrations, but it's been a full evening. So, Mr. Bryant, that is all the um, items that I have for the uh, for this evening. I agree. It has been a very good evening. Um, let's move on to the uh, consent agenda items, items one through ten. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, I have a motion that we accept these items. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Right. A motion that we adjourn. Second. 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 Thanks for coming. Thank you.